What is up guys, my name is Chase, and it's crazy to think that we live in a world where after 10 years, Pikmin 4 is real and it has finally been released. And that got me thinking, what other Nintendo franchises have gotten lost over time? So today I wanted to do a fun little thought experiment and talk about some of the forgotten Nintendo games that need a sequel. Let's start off with a completely biased game from my childhood, which is Mario Hoops 3 on 3. I feel like pretty much anybody who was born in the late 90s will talk about Mario Hoops 3 on 3. I always see YouTube videos and stuff of people talking about how they played this game when they were a kid with all of their friends on the school bus or something. And I'm definitely one of those people as well. I used to play Mario Hoops 3 on 3 on the Nintendo DS with my older brothers. If it's not already abundantly obvious, I am terrible at sports. So at least with video game sports, I can actually stand a chance. But Mario Hoops 3 on 3 was this very interesting type of Mario Mario sports game. If you look at the history of Mario sports games, a lot of times they'll focus on tennis or golf and sometimes we get the occasional soccer. But I feel like it's very rare that we actually get a Mario basketball game, let alone a standalone basketball game, not a mini game included in Mario sports mix or something. So yeah, I think bringing back Mario Hoops 3 on 3 would be a very interesting take on a Mario sports game. I mean, looking at the Switch library today, we have so many different Mario sports games with tennis, golf, and soccer. It's like, why not just add on to that with Mario basketball? Maybe this time around they could call it Mario Hoops 4 on 4. It's a very fun and arcadey take on classic basketball, where it incorporates a bunch of the Mario elements that we know and love nowadays, like question mark panels, or a final smash type of slam dunk. And the original Mario Hoops 3 on 3 even had some weird little crossover characters, since it was developed by Square E. Phoenix, there were some Final Fantasy characters in this game, which was really, really weird, but I don't know, I remember thinking it was so funny that Mario was playing basketball alongside this cactus. And although Mario Hoops 3 on 3 did rely on the bottom touchscreen of the Nintendo DS, I think they could easily translate that to pressing a button on the Joy-Con or something. This arcadey multiplayer basketball type of game I think would be perfect for being able to split off your Joy-Con and one player using a single one on its side. And with the whole 3 on 3 aspect, I feel like it encompasses everything about the Switch, very much similarly to the original Switch trailer back in 2017. The second game that I think deserves a sequel is Punch-Out! As we already confirmed, I'm terrible at anything physical, but I feel like Punch-Out! is a very fun take on boxing. With the last entry to the Punch-Out! series being Punch-Out! on the Wii, I think it would be really cool to revive this series. Punch-Out! offered very unique gameplay, where you did really have to focus on your opponent's tell, try to look for the little nuances in the other player. There's something really satisfying about going back and just playing the old Punch-Out! games, getting into a nice rhythm and just absolutely beating the crap out of somebody. It's a very interesting game. And with Punch-Out! on the Wii, it made use of the Wii Remote and Nunchuck for motion controls. Nowadays, I think it would be cool to have kind of a mix of motion control or buttons, similar to what we've seen in ARMS. And although there are some fighting games like ARMS or the fitness boxing games, I think Punch-Out! has just enough variety and enough uniqueness where it would be really welcome to have a brand new entry on the Switch. And with Little Mac being a character in Smash Bros, why not bring him back to relevancy with a new game? For our third forgotten game, let's talk about Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus is a really weird franchise. What started out as a 2D game on the NES turned into an epic third-person shooter on the Nintendo 3DS, that being the last entry in the series, Kid Icarus Uprising. And since the Nintendo 3DS did have its limitations, with graphics and the main one being the lack of a second circle pad, it made Kid Icarus Uprising a very difficult game to play on the 3DS. You had to use the circle pad and then use your other hand to touch the touch screen, which inclined Nintendo to include a stand in order to not completely wreck people's wrists. But revisiting this series and bringing it over to the Switch, I think could make for a very fun and epic feeling adventure. I mean, look at that, we finally have two sticks to work with for this game. And I think with graphics, they could really make an impression with a new Kid Icarus game. It was really pushing the processing power of the Nintendo 3DS, so having a more powerful console to work with, I'm sure we could see the most definitive and just overall massive new entry for the Kid Icarus series. Now if you've watched my videos before, you can probably guess what our fourth game is gonna be. Let's talk about gosh dang darn Rhythm Heaven. 
I feel like I've talked about this in pretty much every single one of my videos, but I absolutely love rhythm-based games, with Rhythm Heaven being like the gold standard in my opinion. The last Rhythm Heaven game we got was Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix on the Nintendo 3DS, which was more or less just a compilation of some of the previous Rhythm Heaven minigames. The last truly brand new Rhythm Heaven game was Rhythm Heaven Fever on the Nintendo Wii. So I think we are definitely due for a new entry in the Rhythm Heaven series. I think similarly to most video games on the Nintendo Switch, since the user base is much more broad this day and age, I think they could introduce the Rhythm Heaven series to a whole new audience with the Nintendo Switch. Especially with Rhythm Heaven Fever on the Wii, that had such basic gameplay controls that pretty much anybody could just pick it up and start playing, which I feel like works perfectly for this game. It's not like other rhythm games like Guitar Hero or Rock Band, where that does kind of have a steeper learning curve in order to get into. With Rhythm Heaven, all you need is pretty much a single button. So although I might be totally biased towards rhythm games, I would definitely love to see more Rhythm Heaven. And finally, the fifth forgotten Nintendo game that I think deserves a sequel, and this is going to be kind of a curveball, Nintendo Land. Yeah, so this might kind of be a weird one to bring up. Nintendo Land was a launch game for the Nintendo Wii U that made use of the Wii U gamepad features. It was basically a tech demo for Nintendo's new controller, the Wii U gamepad. And because of that, it really relied on using the gamepad heavily, which in my opinion, I don't think there's any way to really bring that directly to the Nintendo Switch. But there are parts of Nintendo Land that I think would be really cool to bring to a new sequel. Just the general idea of a Nintendo theme park where you can play as your own me and go through these different attractions based on Nintendo games, I think is such a cute and fun idea. So although they don't have to directly bring games like Mario Chase to the Nintendo Switch, I think just the overall brand of Nintendo Land with all of the different little Nintendo references in the game, I think could make for a fun party experience for the Nintendo Switch. And especially with the me aspect of it, it was really fun to see myself in like a Mario hat or something or dressed up as Yoshi. Maybe they could even bring over the ridiculously complex me maker from Miitopia. But overall, just having this personalized party game with mini games based on Nintendo's IP, I think is such a fun and cute idea. I want to see my me dressed up as Kirby. <laughs> so there you have it, five forgotten Nintendo games that have not not gotten a sequel after 10 or more years. I think we're kind of at the point in the Switch's lifespan where Nintendo is doing some wacky ideas or they're digging up like older games. So I think these five sequels would make for some pretty interesting games for the Switch. But let me know in the comments what forgotten games would you guys like to see get a sequel in 2023? If you want to see my video talking more about Pikmin 4 after 10 years, feel free to check it out below. For now, thank you so much for watching. My name is Chase and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.